In this video, I'm going to show you how to build this mini game where you have to visually identify as many elements as possible in a limited time. This can be relevant if you're teaching something that requires a lot of practice and repetition and quick recall. That could be vocabulary in a foreign language, road signs, or fine art. Every playthrough is different because the questions are built on the fly based on what you've mastered and what you still need to practice. But before I get into how to build this in storyline without any scripting, I want to let you know about my live webinar where I go through the entire process of gamification and answer any questions you have. You can sign up for the next one at the link below. Now let's get started. So in preparation, I've already got my list of 20 French words that I want people to practice in my game. You can replace this with anything, of course. I've also prepared my 20 images, which are all square and they're all the same size. And finally, I've put a nice background on my blank slides in my slide master. I usually only polish at the end of the process, but this is going to make the video nicer for you to look at. So the way this works is that when Storyline is making a question, it's first going to randomly pick which one of these words it's going to ask. That's the correct answer. And then it's going to randomly pick three more words for decoys. So I'll start by creating five variables. The first one is a number variable called correct. And that's what it's going to ask. So if it picks number 10 here, then the learner is going to have to click on the elephant. Then we have to pick the three decoys. So let's create three more number variables. Whenever I have to create several variables like this, I just make one and then I copy it and then I get rid of the one without a number. I'm also going to need the name of my right answer. So I'm going to create a text variable called correct name. In this case, that would be elephant. So when this game runs, the very first thing it does is pick the correct answer. This happens on the very first slide, so let's call that set correct. And then it's going to jump to the next slide to ask me the question. So let's create that and call it question. Back to set correct. I always get rid of these built in buttons, so let's do that. I'm going to say adjust variable correct to a random number between 1 and 20. So now it's picked which animal it's going to ask the learner to find. And it needs to know the name of that animal. So to do that, I'm going to create a layer here called set correct name. And on this layer, I'm going to say adjust variable correct name to le chat if correct is one. So if you pick number one, then the name is le chat. Then I'm going to duplicate this trigger because if it picked number two at random, then the name is le chien. And I do that all the way down to 20. And once it's set the name, I'm going to make it jump to my question slide. So back on my base layer, it's now going to pick the random number. Then I have to tell it to go to this naming layer. So show layer, set correct name. And from there, it's going to jump to the question slide. Now on the question slide, I'm going to make a text box that says find correct name, which will be le chien, le chat, le kangaroo, whatever. Now for the correct picture. Again, let's get rid of these built in buttons. So this picture I'm inserting is going to be the correct picture. It's always going to be the one that you have to click on. So I'm just going to straight up call it correct. And based on what's been picked at random as the correct number, this picture could be a cat, a dog, a fish or whatever. So I'm going to create different states for this picture. One state for each of the 20 possibilities. So state one is a cat. State two is a dog. State three is a rabbit and so on all the way to 20. So now when the timeline starts on this correct picture, I'm going to change its state to one if the correct number is one. So now it's going to show up as a cat. If the correct number is two, then I'm going to change the state to two, which is the dog. So let's copy this trigger 20 times and adapt it for each of the possibilities. So now let's see if that works. So it asks me for la grenouille and the picture has been updated to a frog. Perfect. Now for the decoys. To make my three decoys, I just have to copy this correct picture. That's why I built the correct one first and I made all this logic so that I don't have to recreate all these states and all the triggers for each decoy. Each one of these pictures now has the same 20 possible states already built in. And I'm going to name these decoy one, decoy two and decoy three. So on this first slide, it's picking my correct answer. Then it names it. And next, I want it to go pick my first decoy at random. So I'll create a new slide called decoy one. So at the end of this naming layer on my first slide, I'm going to make it jump to this decoy one slide instead of going straight to the question. 
When the timeline starts on this slide, decoy 1, it's going to set my decoy 1 to a random number between 1 and 20. But I don't care what the names of the decoy animals are, their names never show up, so I can get rid of this layer. And once I've done that, I have to jump to the question. Of course, when it picks decoy 1, it could potentially pick the same number that it picked for correct, so we'd have a decoy that's identical to the correct answer. That's a problem. So to avoid that, I'm going to say if it has picked the same number here as it did before, then it has to restart this decoy 1 slide and pick another number from 1 to 20. So jump to slide this slide if decoy 1 is equal to variable correct. So now if it's picked the exact same number for both, it's going to restart this slide and pick again. But if they're not the same number, then we're good and we can jump to the question. When I get to the question slide, I want this decoy 1 picture to display whatever animal has been picked as a decoy. Right now its state is changing according to the correct number, so let's change that to decoy 1. And I'll change all of these to decoy 1. And now we can try it. So we can see that it picked this as the correct answer and it named it correctly and my decoy is different. These other two decoys are still changing according to the correct variable but we haven't set those yet so that works. And now I'm going to do a slightly different thing for decoy 2. Let me duplicate this slide and call it decoy 2. So on the decoy 2 slide I want to set decoy 2 to a random number and of course jump to this slide again, that is pick again if decoy 2 is the same as my correct number. But here, it also needs to re-pick if decoy 2 is the same as decoy 1. I don't want any two decoys to be the same. So jump to slide this slide if decoy 2 is equal to correct or if it's equal to decoy 1. If either of these things happen, it needs to pick another number. And here, if decoy 2 is different from correct and from decoy 1, then we're good and we can move on. And now on my decoy 1 slide, I'm not going to jump to the question, I'm going to jump to decoy 2. And as you can guess, next I'm going to create a slide that picks decoy 3. So if all is good on decoy 2, it's going to jump to that. And on the decoy 3 slide, I set the variable decoy 3, and I'm going to check that it's going to be different from everything else I've picked so far. I'm using OR here because if it's the same as any of these, it needs to pick decoy 3 again. And to move on to the question, well, decoy 3 needs to be different from correct and from decoy 1, and from decoy 2, so I'm using AND here. On the question slide, I have to change these two pictures. This one will change according to the variable decoy 2, all the way down the line, so let's change that. And I do the same for decoy 3, all the way down. Now let me just add a little bit of debug text here with my four variables, so that I can see the numbers that have been picked. And then I test. And it works. We can see that it's picking four different numbers, it's naming my correct picture correctly, and it's showing the pictures for the decoys correctly. Good. Now when I click on the correct picture, I want to display a correct layer, so let's create one of those. And I'll create an incorrect layer as well. Then I create the trigger. Show layer correct when the user clicks correct. And when I click on this decoy, show layer incorrect. And I'm going to copy this trigger onto my other two decoys. And then I'm going to show this feedback for half a second. So let's make this timeline last half a second. And at the end of that, I'm going to have it go pick another question. So jump to slide, set correct, when the timeline ends, that is at the end of that half second. And I'll copy that trigger onto incorrect as well. And make sure this layer is also half a second long. So now what, once I've answered, whether I get it right or wrong, it's going to jump back, pick another correct, pick all the decoys, go through all this again, and then it's going to come back to this slide. We'll be revisiting this question slide over and over again. So if you don't want any problems with that, you need to change this slide settings to when revisiting, reset to initial state. If you don't do that, then your feedback layer, correct or incorrect, will still be displayed when you come back here for the next question. So let's test that. I've turned the menu on here so you can see that it's going through each one of these slides every time it builds a new question for me. But of course the right answer is always on the left, so I want to shuffle these now. To do that, I'm going to turn this question slide into a freeform question. So insert, convert to freeform, and I can select any one of these three here, it'll work. So let's just say pick one. Next I have to tell Storyline which items are the answer choices so that it knows which items to shuffle. So I pick my four pictures here. 
I don't bother giving it a right answer here. I'm only using this functionality to shuffle the answers. Back on the slide view, I'll tell it to shuffle my answers. But now that I've made it into a freeform question, Storyline has created its own feedback layers, so let's get rid of those. It's also added a submit button, so let's get rid of that too. Okay, the next thing I want to do is to end this game when I get all the animals correct. So let's create a number variable called score. And I'm also going to create a variable called max score, also a number. And at the very beginning on my set correct slide, I'm going to set the max score to 20 because there happens to be 20 animals in my list. And then whenever I get one correct and this correct layer shows up on the question slide, I'm going to increase the score by one. So adjust the variable score, add one when the timeline starts. But when this layer ends, if I've already gotten them all, I don't want to go pick another question. I want to display a victory layer, so let's create that. And since this is a game over layer, I'm going to give it an exit button that exits the course. So now at the end of this correct layer, go pick a new question if the current score is less than the max score. However, if it's equal to the max score, then that means I've gotten them all, I've won the game. So don't go pick a new question, but show the win layer instead. And I'm going to display the score and the max score here just to make sure it all works. So let's test that. Okay, so now the score increases and when I get to 20, the game ends. Next, I don't want to see a question again once I've gotten it correct. So to do that, I have to track the status of each animal which ones I've found and which ones I haven't. So I'm going to create a variable called found. It's a true false variable. And I'm going to copy that for each one of my 20 animals. So now when I get animal one correct, the correct layer is going to show up and I'm going to set that found one variable to true. If the correct animal, that is the animal I just identified correctly was number one, then I'll copy that and modify it for each of the 20 animals. So now it's going to set each animal to found. And now when I pick a new animal, before I move on to naming it, I have to make sure Storyline checks that that animal hasn't been found already. So once I've picked the animal, I'm going to say jump to slide this slide, that is pick another one, if correct is equal to one, that is if I just picked animal number one, and found one happens to be true, that is you've already identified it. If that's the case, then reload this slide and pick again. And then I'm going to copy that and modify it for each of my 20 animals. Super important that your show layer trigger happens after all that. I want to check all this before it moves on to naming the animal and picking the decoys. If this trigger is up here, then this logic is going to get skipped entirely. So bring that trigger all the way down to the bottom. The last thing I need for the game to work is a timer. So to do that, I'm going to create a number variable called timer. Next, I'm going to create a new blank slide and put it right at the beginning. I'm going to call this game setup. So this slide is going to run only once when you start the game. After that, we'll be going back and forth nonstop between making a question and asking the question. And the whole time, I want the timer to be going down. So if I set my timer at 60 seconds here or anywhere else, it's just going to get reset to 60 every time there's a new question. So I'm going to set my timer here on the first slide because that slide runs only once. And again, I'll get rid of the built-in buttons, set my timer to 60, and make a trigger to go to the next slide once this is done. And when the game ends, if I want to restart a new game, it's going to jump to this game setup slide and start over. So let's make a play again button on my game over layer. Now when I click that, it's going to jump to this game setup slide and that slide is going to reset my timer to 60. And since I'm here on the game setup slide, I'm also going to reset my score to zero and I'm going to set all my found variables back to false so that I can play again from scratch. And while I'm at it, I'm going to take this trigger that sets the max score to 20 and I'm going to move it to my game setup slide. I only need to set this max score once, so it makes more sense to have it here on the game setup. And only once all these game variables are set will I move to pick my correct element. So let's move this trigger down to the end. Okay, now to make the countdown timer. So on my question slide, I'm going to create a countdown layer. I'm going to make this layer exactly one second long. And at the end of that one second, I'm going to reduce the timer by one. So I'm going to say adjust variable timer, subtract value one 
from it. So this layer will show up, wait one second, then decrease the timer by one. But of course I want this to happen over and over again, nonstop. So I have to make this layer disappear and reappear continuously. To do that, I'm going to use hide this layer, then show this layer. So now this will happen over and over again every second. But of course I have to tell Storyline to display this countdown layer the first time. So on my base layer, I'm going to say show layer countdown when the timeline starts. So here I'm calling this layer once and then that layer itself is going to take care of coming back over and over again. And let's have the timer displayed here so we can make sure that it all behaves correctly. Now one more thing. Because your countdown layer is constantly going to be appearing and disappearing, you want to make sure it doesn't mess with your other layers. So double click here and clear this checkbox, hide other slide layers. We don't want that. If this was on, then whenever this layer shows up, which is like every second, it would hide your other layers and you need your correct and incorrect layers to jump back and pick another question. So let's test that. And we see that it works. All right. So we've handled the perfect ending, which is when the player gets them all under 60 seconds. But now we need to handle the case where time runs out. So let's create a layer for that and call it times up. This is a game over layer. So I've just used the same buttons as I have on my victory layer. And on my base layer, I'm going to create a trigger to show that layer if the timer hits zero. So show layer times up when variable timer changes if the timer is equal to zero. So this trigger checks every time the timer changes and it will fire up the layer if the timer ever hits zero. And to test that, I'm going to go and set my timer to five seconds so we don't have to wait the full 60 seconds to see if it works. Okay. I'm going to speed this up for you. Okay. It works, but now my problem is that it keeps going. So to fix that, I just have to go back to my countdown layer and say, subtract one, but only if the timer is greater than zero. If the timer is at or below zero, then don't keep subtracting. So now when I test again, it stops at zero and everything works. Now let's remember to set this back to 60 because we're done testing that. And now we're done with the main functionality. What's left now is to test debug and put some final polishing touches on it. I opted for a progress bar with some sound effects and this dial display for the timer that has a tick tick warning when you get close to time's up. Now this is how I'd build it if I was making only one game, but if I was planning on reusing it with a lot of different content, then it'd be a lot more efficient to use JavaScript. So if that's something you're interested in seeing in a later video, be sure to let me know in the comments. Also, if this was useful, I would love a comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.